Hello, this is a recording of Accounting for Sustainability's Practitioners Workshop on Accounting for Finance Submissions. It is designed for finance professionals of banks and other financial institutions, but will also be of interest to their counterparts in sustainability and risk. With an overview of the Global GHG Accounting and Reporting Standard presented by the Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financials, PCAF, and with presentations from both NatWest and ABN AMRO on the practical steps that they have taken on accounting for finance admissions. I hope that you find this recording of value. Lastly, you may also wish to read our recently published guidance for finance teams on net zero, both a cross-sectoral one and one specifically for banks. These can be downloaded for free from our website. My name is Kerry Perkins from the Prince's Accounting Sustainability Project, also known as A4S. Um, it was established by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales in 2004 to transform finance to make sustainable business business as usual. I head up our capital markets work where we have been doing a lot of work with the banking community, the global banking community, exploring the role of the finance function in enabling their organisation to achieve a net zero commitment and we've been deep dive diving into accounting for finance emissions which is clearly the biggest focus for financial services when adopting a net zero ambition the aim of this session is to provide an overview for finance teams in particular on the role that they play and can play in supporting the process of finance emissions measuring and reporting and i'm really delighted to welcome Tiered Krumperman, Global Head of Advisory Reporting and Engagement at ABN AMRO, Supriya Sobti, Head of Regulatory Assurance at NetWest Group, um, for them both to provide first-hand experience of the steps that they have taken on finance emissions, accounting, and offering responses to any questions you may have. And we've also will have um, from the Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financials, PCAF, Heel Lindhorst, from, who's the executive director, and Angelica Afandeo, program manager, to provide an overview of the PCAF approach. With no further ado, I would like to ask Heel and Angelica to provide an overview of the PCAF approach. Thank you, Kerry, for, for the introduction. And let me uh, start by thanking uh, A4S for, for the invitation. We're really happy to, to be with you um, with all of the, the people that are joining from all the uh, institutions worldwide. And um, today, uh, the presentation from, from us, from PCAF, is basically an introduction of what PCAF is, why was it formed, and um, an introduction as well of how financial institutions are using the PCAF methodologies for measuring finance emissions. So I will cover the first part of the presentation and then uh, he'll uh, will follow with uh, with the with the standard uh, description. So let's start first with uh, what PCAF is. The Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financials is um, an initiative that it's global and it's led by the industry itself. So it was created by a group of financial institutions, banks, and investors with um, one question in mind, and it was how to measure the climate impact of portfolios. And that question uh, was raised back in 2015, even before, in the Netherlands, where the, a group of banks and investors from, from the Netherlands wanted to support uh, the, the, the Dutch government towards the uh, Paris Agreement. So what the, the Dutch government was bringing to Paris and the Dutch uh, institutions wanted to pledge as well what from the financial industries they could contribute uh, to those goals. And so the, they zero in on the, this key question of assessing the financial, uh, the climate impact of, of the financial portfolios, which is the first step um, in, the, in the journey for climate action. And they started exploring some approaches of how to measure those, uh, those uh, emissions from, from, from their portfolios and develop certain methodologies that were tested and piloted in the Netherlands. This then in 2018, these methodologies were also piloted in North America, both in the United States and Canada, and even a, the group of banks in, in this region developed an additional approach 
that it was also tested. So given the, um, the, the success of these pilots and also the demand from institutions globally, the, the PCAF initiative was launched globally in 2019. And the reason for this globalization was basically to standardize the measurement and the disclosure of finance emissions, which is also called the climate impact of portfolios. Back then, uh, this group, this global group was composed of around 50 financial institutions from five regions of the world, North America, Latin America, Asia Pacific, Africa, Europe, and, um, and North America. And the steering committee, which is basically the group that drives the initiative uh, from, the from, from the governance perspective, is composed of eight, eight financial institutions, which you can see uh, in the slide. These institutions um, represent a variety uh, of, of institutions and banks and investors. So the investors are represented by the UN um, Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance. And it's also composed of institutions that are large, medium, and small size. On the next slide, we can see how the institution, the, the initiative has grown to more than 130 financial institutions worldwide. PCAF is present now in 40 countries, and um, the total assets of the participants represent more than $40 trillion in total assets. Here I can the, the, the key message of the, or the two key messages of these slides are the following. The first one is that when PCAF was launched in 2019, most of the institutions were medium and small size. But as the initiative uh, started to grow, more institutions realized that the value added of measuring finance emissions was really important for the journey uh, of climate action of all of the banks and investors. And therefore we started to see uh, the growth uh, or the addition of financial institutions also uh, that were large, global, and also not only banks, but also investors. So these are just some of the examples uh, of institutions that, that have joined beyond the initial 50 that, that started the globalization. The second key message here is what are the objectives of PCAP? So simply there are two objectives. One is the development of a global standard for measuring finance emissions. That is what has been already um, developed last year, the global standard for measuring and reporting finance emissions um, for the financial industry. And then the second objective is to expand um, the initiative in a way that more financial institutions start to use the standard and, uh, and measure and disclose their finance emissions. So on the next slide, we see that um, the first objective, which is this harmonization of how to measure finance emissions was achieved at the end of last year. And this was not a, a piece of work that started from, from scratch um, in, in 2020. It really started back in 2011 with the Greenhouse Gas Protocol um, that looked into the category 15 of a scope three emissions at the corporate level. And this is scope three category 15 for those who are not very familiar with the greenhouse gas protocol basically means just a little piece of the scope three, which, re which refers to the lending and investment portfolios. So basically you as a bank has, uh, you, ha you have, sorry, um, scope one and two emissions of your operations, of your buildings, of your administrations, but the lending and the investment portfolios are the the piece of, the, of your operations that have the highest emissions um, in, in, in these in this, uh, numerous, numerous scopes and, and categories. So this, the, in 2011, already the Greenhouse Gas Protocol um, indicated the, some guidelines, very high level guidelines on how to, um, to treat those, those emissions related to, to the portfolio. And as I mentioned back in 2015, when the, when the group of the Dutch financial institutions started to um, develop some approaches on how to measure climate impact, then they basically took the 2011 greenhouse gas protocol corporate standard and then built upon that. 
And so the whole process continue until next until 2020 when the, the standard was developed by a group of financial institutions that are part of PCAF. Important to highlight here is that the standard has the built on greenhouse gas protocol. It's an approval from or a stamp from the greenhouse gas protocol, meaning that they reviewed um, the standard prior, prior to their publication to, um, to, re to, uh, to ensure that the standard was in conformance with the requirements of the greenhouse gas protocol. So all institutions, banks and investors that are using the standard can be sure that what they're using complies with the greenhouse gas protocol and it's up to um, to the standards of um, of the um, of the methodologies that are required for measuring finance emissions. In the next slide, you can see the six asset classes for which the standard provides methodologies. So these are typical um, asset classes that you, as banks, uh, have in in your portfolios, and that are. Um, across the globe, very similar. So you have listed equity and corporate bonds, business loans, project finance, um, real estate and mortgages, and also motor vehicle loans. These were selected by the PCAF core team, which is the group that I mentioned is responsible for the development of the standard. Volunteers from the, the full um, 100, 130 plus uh, financial institutions that are part of PCAF. And uh, for each of these asset classes, uh, there are obviously some um, uh, rules or carbon, we call it carbon accounting rules of how to measure. But the general approach is, is harmonized. It's one approach for all of the asset classes. And there's the nuances are basically um, depending of what type um, of, of lending or investment the, ba the bank is doing. Okay. so. Um, he will we'll provide more details into the, this approach, but as if we go to the next slide, what I want to, um, the, sec the second thing that I want you uh, participants to take away from, from this presentation, uh, more than the nitty gritty of the methodologies is how you as finance teams can be part of the process uh, that the sustainability and risk teams are um, are, um, are doing for the measurement of finance emissions and how that is connected with other climate business goals that your institutions have. So these four business goals that you see on the screen are basically the most common business goals named by the financial institutions that participate in PCAF. This is why uh, the members of PCAF join PCAF and measure and disclose finance emissions. So the first one is about transparency. They want to be transparent internally with their, their internal stakeholders, with their management and board, and also with the external stakeholders. For example, those who report to CDP. CDP already requires or asks in their questionnaire about whether banks are measuring finance emissions and whether they are using the PCAF methodology. The second goal relates to climate risks. And this is basically um, the assessment of what um, your investments or exposure in lending um, represents for the for the uh, for the carbon risk um, in the economy, and the institution or fund or um, the initiative that um, that is front and or has front and center the climate risk uh, uh, related transition risks are the TCFD. And as you may have already um, come across the news that TCFD is, has incorporated the PCAF methodologies as the um, approach to measure and report the finance emissions in the TCFD reports. So this is a major, um, a major uh, milestone because TCFD before the, the publication that they, that they did in early June, they did not have finance emissions or absolute emissions uh, recommended using PICA. Um, they basically recommended another metric, a weighted average uh, WASI. And uh, this is a, a step up in the alignment of PICAF with uh, other institutions, 
like TCFD in this case. The last two, which, is, which are climate financial products and alignment with the Paris Agreement, these are important ones that, uh, that I want you to, to focus on right now because transparency and risks are important, obviously, um, but we don't want to focus you on the hurdles, but we want to focus you on the opportunities. And this is what Business Goal 3 and 4 uh, brings about. So on the next slide, you can see um, that there is, a, there is a diagram that shows you what is the the framework to get to net zero emissions by 2050, which is the, the general uh, overarching goal that, uh, that we all globally want to achieve. And by measuring finance emissions, banks can inform climate strategies, can inform the actions that you need to take to develop products uh, and season opportunities that will support that transition. So, this is just basically to move away from thinking about the transition as an obstacle, as a hurdle, as something that it's a difficult thing to do. But actually, yes, it is difficult, it is challenging, but there are a lot of opportunities that banks can, um, can take from this, uh, from this journey. And um, here, what I, what I wanted to highlight, there are, there are some examples of banks and there are many more. Uh, I just didn't want to flow you with so many, but here I, I show you in the two, uh, two um, extremes, the Strios and IBM AMRO, which are founders uh, of PCAF. And then in the middle, you have a beneficial state bank, which is a small bank in North America, and Barclays, which, which was a bank that joined at the end of last year. And um, for example, Trios, what Trios has been doing is that they measure finance emissions to track the climate impact of their mortgage portfolio. And by doing that, they can identify um, where they should be focusing on within, within the properties that they are financing, and then identify the clients and offer a spe a special mortgages uh, or mortgage loans to improve the energy efficiency of houses, the houses of their clients. So they offer this uh, special products to their clients and their clients get the benefit of um, a better a better mortgage, but also a, a more comfortable uh, place to live. And uh, in the case of Beneficial State Bank, they have partnered with the state of California to help um, income qualified Californians purchase um, new or use hybrid or electric vehicles. And this is this is basically linked with the regulation in California to, um, to electrify the fleet in the, in the state. Barclays, in, in, in this case, they have developed uh, what is called a green loan that is focusing only on funding green energy and sustainability projects. So they use the, the measurement of finance emissions to track the climate, the, the, the climate impact. So they can measure the climate impact of the projects the proposals uh, that come to them, and they have um, a budget of up to five million to per project to fund projects that have this either positive climate impact or that help reduce the climate impact. But they can only measure that climate impact by by seeing what the the finance emissions of those products are. And lastly, uh, with ABM Amro, I will not. Uh, go into so much detail here because we have Tier who can actually give us even more detail about this. Uh, but what we know is that uh, the bank has um, developed commercial real estate tools to improve the building energy efficiency. And this is within the um, 2030 uh, um, climate goal that, uh, that ABM AMRO has to, uh, to reduce I think is to decarbonize the portfolio of, of real estate by 2030. But I, I will not go into so much detail uh, here to, to let Tier explain um, later. So this is how I wanted to, to finish the first part of the introduction of PICAF. Um, and I hope that this last slide, it's really the slide that, that you as, a, as, as financial teams can, uh, can take on as a, as a positive, the positive story of, of what 
and how you can use uh, the finance emissions measurement and work with your, with your teams internally uh, to help develop products that will help the transition to a net zero emissions by 2050. Yeah, Angelica, thanks. Uh, so far, I will take over uh, now to explain you a bit more about uh, how measuring finance emission works, uh, how we are structured as PCAF, and, and how we also support financial institutions within the network. So um, please move to the next slide. Um, yeah, actually, your role as uh, as as being part of the finance team is also critical in measuring finance because uh, a large part of uh, implementing uh, well the measurement of finance emission relates to uh, having access to uh, data, uh, especially at the client level. So your uh, client relationship is key to improve uh, the data quality over time. But also, um, and to implement uh, measuring finance emissions, of course, but also to, to spot uh, opportunities uh, for uh, decarbonizing uh, those emissions uh, from uh, those clients. And here you see a graphic how uh, the PCAF uh, network uh, works together um, uh, to share best practices on how this is done, on how to measure finance emissions, how to get access to client level data because this is a uh, open source uh, collaboration in which uh, well the more than 130 financial institutions at the moment collaborate so when you join uh, pcaf which is uh, free there are no uh, costs involved then you are allocated located to uh, to one of these uh, regional or local implementation teams at the at the global level, we have also uh, a few uh, groups that are active on, on the one hand on developing uh, the next version of the standard. We call that the core team that's currently working on the, the next version of the standard or the climate data working group that uh, works on, on the database. And as Angelica said, uh, we have the steering committee, of course, that leads uh, the overall initiative supported by, uh, by us as secretariat. But here, uh, the main uh, part for you is, is uh, the bottom part where uh, we have these implementation teams. So they come uh, together uh, in a frequency, uh, at least on a quarterly basis, but in many uh, well, countries or regions, they come more, uh, more often together. Uh, for instance, in the UK, we have a specific group uh, led by Federated Hermes which comes uh, more together like on a monthly basis. The same is in, uh, in the Netherlands and also in Germany, Austria, Switzerland. We have uh, financial institutions that come um, often uh, together to discuss the specific implementation of, uh, well, the methodology for certain asset classes or to discuss how to get to better data. Also, in other uh, regions, uh, we are growing rapidly and are setting up uh, local chapters. For instance, in Asia, we have uh, established PCAF Korea. We have also uh, uh, upcoming PCAF Singapore and maybe even PCAF Japan and PCAF China. So uh, we're growing uh, in that sense, but this is uh, all, uh, of course, to help facilitate the network uh, to share best practices and to learn uh, from each other. Next slide. And as Angelica mentioned, uh, the standard covers uh, six asset classes. And uh, currently, uh, the core team is working on an extension of uh, the standard covering also sovereign bonds and green bonds. And uh, we will also have additional guidance on emission removals uh, because more and more financial institutions want to steer towards uh, net zero goals and need also guidance on measuring um, yeah, the, the emission removals that take place through their loans and investments, uh, which also relates to the paper just uh, published uh, as mentioned by Kerry at, uh, at the beginning on how to steer against the net zero goals. Uh, you need to also invest in, uh, well, in uh, 
well, climate friendly opportunities in the transition, but also in uh, emission removals, nature based solutions or uh, technologies. Um, next slide, I will give a bit of insight on how the calculation. I just had a question on the previous slide, if I may. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you can. Um, my, my quick question was that uh, uh, I mean, these six classes, uh, will there be any further refinement or changes to these classes? I mean, more from a standardization point of view. And uh, I mean, for example, like, and the second related question is we talk about business loans and unlisted equity as, as one bucket. So, I mean, as, as an asset class, obviously they are slightly different as well. So is there any special specific rationale of clubbing those two together? So get yeah, two questions I had. Yeah, so uh, just to run you quickly through the asset classes, uh, how we have defined them. So listed equity and corporate bonds is all about traded products uh that are traded on the on the market and uh, and they mainly um, relate to um to a method that is uh, slightly uh different than when it's uh, a non-traded uh, product so when it's for a private company uh like a <coughs> loan or unlisted uh, equity uh, there's a different method for that that's why we differentiated that um and uh, well, the standard is is out now. We will add uh, more case studies to the standard to explain how these methods uh, are implemented. And uh, we might over time also uh, publish, uh, you could say, supplementary guidance. For instance, uh, for commercial real estate, we currently have a collaboration with uh, Grasp and uh, CREM, two other initiatives to provide a bit more technical insights into how to do the calculation. Um, and uh, yeah, that uh, that technical supplement will also be uh, published under uh, PCAF. Um, so um, if there is uh, a need uh, for by the industry to have uh, more details on uh, the accounting, then, uh, then that's uh, possible as PCAF is an industry-led initiative. So in, in general, just a highlight on how PCAF, uh, greenhouse gas accounting, uh, works is it's an annual exercise uh, at a certain point in time. So it's uh, related to your financial accounting. So when you uh, make up your balance sheet for your financial reporting, you connect emissions data to it. So you look at what is our outstanding amount at that specific time in our portfolio to a specific client. Then you take uh, the annual emissions of uh, that client and attribute those emissions according to uh, the outstanding amount over the, yeah, we call it the total finance or the enterprise value or the value of uh, that, that activity. And that, that, that attribution factor is the heart of uh, what PCAF has uh, defined. So you attribute the annual emissions of your client or, or, or that can be a, a company, that can be a, a project, and it can also be a property, but uh, the methods are quite similar. You attribute those uh, emissions to your uh, portfolio. And uh, by doing that, you can sum up uh, those finance emissions uh, to get to a total at an asset class level or at a total for your uh, financial institution. And the attribution factor, it's quite a uh, generic formula here. There's some uh, minor details and minor differences uh, for each asset class, but that's that's well explained in the, the, in the standard. Next slide. What is also uh, a very uh, valuable instrument is the data quality scoring. So PCAP, enables financial institutions to uh, actually start right away uh, you, you there's enough data out there just to already start because uh, also pcaf has a, a database developed with uh, sector average data that can immediately be applied by you as a financial institution to get started uh, but that comes with a lower data quality and uh, that is scored with a level five or a level four um, but that gives you a 
clear indication on where are the emissions in my portfolio? Which clients should I target to get better data? And that's especially also a role for the finance teams that have access to those clients that have client uh, relationships to, to ask these clients if they have been measuring their emissions, uh, if they have been reporting that, if that data is out there in, in order to collect it. And that's especially relevant for, we call that the hotspots, where you have high emissions and poor data quality you know, at the level five. So those are the main uh, clients that you should target uh, for getting a better uh, data. Now hand over to Tiered. Yes, thanks for that. And um, uh, it's great that um, Angelica and Giel have done the intro because now I can just focus on what ABN AMRO has done so far with this uh, PCAF um, uh, carbon accounting standard. And um, so great to be here. Uh, thanks A4S for inviting us and um, and happy to share some very practical examples on how ABN AMRO has adopted PCAF and what the role of finance has been in, in doing that. Um, if we could put up my slides, ah, here they go. Great, so that's me. Uh, I work at ABN AMRO and been there for quite a while, over 20 years. And back in 2015, we were invited uh, to join this group of, of, of a few Dutch banks. Um, and I, I was there, I remember the first meeting, it was, it was a, a bit strange because we came to a sort of conclusion that there is no real methodology for carbon accounting in the financial sector. And we said, well, we can wait for it to, to evolve on its own or we can um, put our joint efforts into this uh, PCAF community uh, and, and form this PCAF community. And, um, and that's what we did in 2015. And, and it's amazing. We, we would never have expected it to grow to 130 and 40 trillion and, and, and all, the, all these numbers that Angelica just, just shared. But our role is also in the, in the governance of PCAF. So I chair the, the Dutch and European uh, group. Um, and I'm also, and that's, that's something I really wanted to mention here, I'm also always available in case you have any questions or follow up or would like to have a, a conversation on, on PCAF and, and how, to, how to include that in your company or bank. Um, so, so feel free to reach out to either to me or Gil or Angelica. I know that we are more, more than happy to, uh, to support that. Um, on the next slide, I, I, I've written down the essence uh, as I use these slides a lot within the bank um, uh, with different teams to explain what are we really doing here. We are measuring carbon uh, using PCAF. We are reporting on it uh, in our annual and integrated reports and, and disclosures. Um, and our goal is to steer on it. And, and, our, and, and there's different ways of steering. Uh, we've, we've committed ourselves to science-based target setting, but there's also net zero pathways. There's different, different ways of commitment and steering. But in order to steer, you first need to measure, right? So you need to know uh, the numbers. And um, I have just two examples of, of measuring and, and reporting as we are doing it now. And on the next slide, there's the first one, and it's related to, to, to the biggest part of our balance sheet. It's residential mortgages. Um, it's about 150 billion euros in size. It's over half of our P&L. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a big bubble, you could say. And there's a big bubble there in terms of carbon as well. On the next slide, you see how we have calculated that, and it's it's not to well, it's so simple that I don't I think everybody will will understand or it's 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 a very simple methodology. You have the average energy use per label, and you multiply that by the emission factor, and these emission factor difference differ per country, but they are it's available data. Then you get um, the carbon emissions per energy label. And then all the data that you need is in D, actually, uh, the number of uh, objects per energy label. So the number of mortgages that we have as a bank per energy label. And in the case of the Dutch banks, we can get that information from a central database. It's publicly available. It's free of charge. It is um, pretty precise. Um, so we can we can uh, really attribute the carbon emissions to our own portfolio. And what that look like, looks like in reporting is on the next slide. 
in our uh, sorry um, one more uh, yeah this is the one uh, so this is what it looks like in our uh, uh, public disclosures um, where you see the number of object objects per energy label and then uh, and as a percentage as well um, and, um, and and see it add up in terms of carbon uh, and in terms of total carbon um, so that's this is a I think this is the best example we have. We, we do it on all um, uh, uh, items within the bank. So we, we publish, uh, we use the PCAP methodology for, for a lot more. I'll share that a little later. Um, but this is, this is the one we started with um, because it's such a big part of our balance sheet. And the role of finance is crucial here because they are the one that knows, uh, they are the teams that gather these numbers. So it's not sustainability, it's not risk, it's uh, finance that uh, uh, do these calculations um, for, for in the case of ABN Umbro. Um, I also mentioned steering in the beginning. So this is the measuring and the reporting part. And on the next slide, you see a small example that even if you don't have all the data you, uh, and don't have science-based targets methodology all, all worked out, you can still steer your portfolio and Angelica uh, mentioned this already um, a little bit in her, in her part, but we've set a goal to steer our overall portfolio to an average energy label or EPC um, of label A by 2030. And this means that we have something to steer with and we can use PCAF to measure it. Uh, we can use our annual reports to report on it and we can use this as a steering mechanism to steer this part of the portfolio into the right direction. There's one more example that I want to share because I'm, I'm fully aware that a lot of banks have more commercial or corporate loans on their balance sheet. So on the next slide, uh, I'll introduce uh, how we do that for our lending portfolio. It's a similar approach. So you'll see that these methodologies align quite well, but it's different data sources. So on the next slide, uh, we, uh, you see which data points we use. Uh, uh, and, and this is actually, um, quite, I would say, low quality data. Uh, it's quite generic data. That's why the data quality score is so low, the five. So we use the third party database uh, for our CNIB clients. That is uh, their scope, just their scope one and two, uh, but it's attributed to those clients. So that's quite correct, I could say, or quite factual. But we use a, a more common database, a Central Bureau of Statistics generic database for our commercial banking clients. And commercial banking in terms of ABN AMRO is up to 250 million turnover and institutional banking is, is above that. But it means that it's quite generic numbers. Um, it does give us something to measure, um, but you see that, and that's why I'm sharing this example as well. This is where we need to improve. This is where we need better data. And this is where developments like NFRD, CSRD um, uh, will help us going forward because our clients will start to report on this as well. And that will improve the data quality for uh, the peak of measurement. On the next slide, you see what it looks like again in our report, in our disclosures. So we have these MACE sector codes um, uh, that are quite, uh, quite common. Uh, and you see um, uh, the comparison between 2019 and 2020 here because we've been doing this for a while um, and the overall carbon emissions of our lending portfolio, which is in size, it's not secret, but it's not on this slide, but it's around 80 billion uh, of overall lending activities. And again, this is where finance teams, they tell us, what, or they have the data on the loans per sector. Uh, we match that with the greenhouse gas emissions per sector. And then ultimately it's disclosed in the, in the annual reporting, which is again a finance activity. And uh, also good to mention, we got assurance, uh, for, uh, external assurance from EY on all these um, uh, calculations uh, in our scope three emissions. Now, what does it look like in total? If we add it all up on the next slide, um, you see a picture of our non-financial data and engagement report. That's where, where the, we disclose it. Um, and we've, we've, we've applied all 
uh, available asset classes. So we've uh, applied PCAF to all available asset classes within ABN Amro, um, uh, except for uh, a few uh, that are not developed yet or methodologies that we feel that are not um, uh, mature enough to, uh, to apply it to. And that's related to central banks and government loans. And actually, this is something that we, we not as ABN Amro, but as PCAF are developing uh, throughout the year uh, now, but we, it wasn't available uh, so far. We see the data quality score on the right. Um, and as I mentioned, um, uh, um, assurance has been given on the overall scope three emissions of ABNOMO, uh, which, is, which is, well, uh, great, I would say. One more slide, and then I'll hand over to NetWest that have a great story to tell as well. Um, uh, so, so, so for us, it's it's quite simple. The, the the goal is to reach Paris targets, right? Well below two degrees or 1.5. Uh, we are looking at net zero. We didn't sign up for net zero yet because we feel that the methodology still need need a lot of work before we can commit to that. But PCAV is a, is a means uh, to measure. Uh, Science-based target is a means to set targets, and the overall goal is to reach um, uh, Paris goals, uh, and not just for ABN Amro, but for the financial sector and, and for our clients as a whole. So this is why uh, this is not a competitive space. Uh, this is something where we work together, uh, where, where within the bank, finance and risk sustainability strategy work together quite intensively and, and looking for even more uh, because of all this regulation that is coming up. Uh, but we're also working together across the sector um, with other banks, uh, investors, and that's really a fun space uh, to be in. So I enjoy this work a lot and um, happy to answer questions, but I think it's good uh, looking at Kerry here a little bit for the time as well. So just moving over now to Supriya, if I can invite her to um, come up on the podium and present, that would be great. Thanks, Kerry, and thanks, Tia, for the, for the um, interesting presentation and Hila and Angelica as well. Um, I guess I'll continue with the theme of uh, making PCAF practical and then what we've done in NatWest um, in calculating our finance emissions through last year. Um, so while the slides come up, I'll just sort of start off with um, our journey in NatWest. Um, so if we go to the next slide, our journey effectively started um, when we announced our climate ambition in February 2020. Um, on the left, you see a snapshot of it. It's, it's quite detailed, but the main um, ambition we have is to um, halve the climate impact of our financing activity by 2030. So we are using 2019 as a baseline and working towards um, halving our finance emissions by 2030. And that's where um, I suppose we started to look for a, a methodology to calculate financed emissions. Um, and we became the first major UK bank to join PCAF. Um, so we are using PCAF um, as well. In addition to that, we recently signed up to the Science-Based Targets Initiative um, and looking to set uh, sectorial targets as well as um, becoming a founding member of the Net Zero Banking Alliance. So looking ahead to 2050, we want to work towards achieving net zero um, for our um, financing activity. The other ambitions we have um, are to um, enhance the EPC, um, energy efficiency of our mortgage book, um, and have 50% of EPC A, B, and C by 2030. And then we've also set aside um, 20 billion for uh, green funding and financing. So just moving on in terms of the actual calculation of finance emissions on the next slide. So I sit within finance. Um, so uh, when we started our journey, we put together a core team, uh, which included members from various areas in the bank. So we had strategy, sustainability, um, finance, risk, as well as business team. So we recognized from the start that to complete this um, journey, we would require business teams involved because at some point we want our product um, or opportunities and other strategy changing to help support our customers. So we've inv invited and involved the business teams right from the start. Um, and instead of kind of attacking and, and taking the full balance sheet, we selected four sectors um, to start our work. So we picked residential mortgages, which is 40% of our book. And in addition, we picked three sectors um, in the commercial book. So we have agriculture, primary farming, um, automotive manufacturing, and oil and gas extraction. Um, and this constitutes 45% of the um, investing activity as at December 19. 
The basis of selecting these was, um, as I said, based on the proportion um, of our uh, financing activity, as well as the impact, the carbon impact of these sectors. So the oil and gas was an obvious choice and so was automotive. In addition, obviously, we just wanted to make sure there were appropriate methodologies available to calculate the sectors we selected. Um, and that's where we use the PCAP methodology for calculating our absolute emissions, as well as emission intensities. Um, what were our challenges? Um, I suppose um, on the next slide, a lot of them have been covered by um, what you did mention, um, but just to pick a few, um, the methodologies are developing. So obviously the PCAP standard is there to calculate current emissions and emission intensity. What we also wanted to do and align to our ambition looking forward to 2030 is we wanted to also calculate some forward-looking intensities. So where do we want to get to in 2030 and 2050? And that requires the use of some scenario analysis um, and additional tools. Um, and we use the SPTI tools uh, where possible, the Science-Based Targets Initiative. Um, however, not all methodologies were developed um, when we were doing this work and, and they're still um, in progress. Um, so we had to... Um, select the methodologies that were available. In some cases, they were not finalized, um, but we made sure we called those out. Um, and that made the process quite challenging. The other piece is data. Data isn't perfect. Um, obviously in finance, we have been gathering um, data on our customers for many, many years. There's a lot of risk data that's available. There's a lot of regulatory data that's available. There isn't a lot of climate and emission data that's available in our systems today. Um, and in terms of our customers uh, producing their emission numbers, there's a difference in the emissions data availability when you look at listed companies versus non-listed companies. So there's better data for some clients versus other clients. Um, in the UK, we also have challenges with EPC data. So say, for example, at NatWest, we only have EPC data for about 50% of our book. Um, an EPC is only granted uh, for 10 years and then it expires. So um, it's, it's a moving target in terms of how much of the book is covered. So there are various data challenges that we had to deal with. Um, again, there was one option to wait till data is perfect, but we didn't know when that would be. So we went with the other option to use the best available data um, and where needed, apply assumptions and extrapolations. And obviously that makes the process um, quite difficult. It, it requires various kind of approvals, et cetera, as well. And, and as you being finance will recognize, we all get nervous when we are making assumptions, uh, especially when they have to get published. Um, so there was a whole um, sort of discussion in terms of the assumptions and making sure we were comfortable with them. The other piece is, this is new. Um, so we didn't start in 2015, like ABN did. Uh, as I mentioned, we started in 2019, 2020. Um, and we were learning effectively as we were developing this. So it was a learning journey for the organization and, and we all worked very well together to get there. Um, unlike any other reporting or accounting standard, um, the carbon emissions journey doesn't end with calculation and reporting. Um, there is another step of managing the transition, working with customers to reduce emissions um, and, and launching products or taking action so that we can meet our, our ambition to be 50% um, um, uh, emission reductions by 2030. So we recognize that challenge. Um, we recognize that there is a dependence on government. Uh, we probably need policy actions in certain sectors. We are also dependent on customer response. Um, so if you think about um, making a home greener, we are dependent on a customer um, you know, spending money on their home to make it and bring it up an APC level. We are dependent on customers to have double glazing. So there is a lot of dependence and there is a lot of activity required in terms of helping customers, educating, behavior, et cetera. So we recognize that um, and we are working to, um, to work with our customers on helping them enhance the quality of, say, their homes uh, versus in manufacturing customers, uh, supporting them through uh, finance um, to help make their activities greener. So there are various activities involved that that will take a long time and the transition sort of has to happen over a long period of time and working on that. So that adds to the challenge as well. Um, if I look at the next slide, um, just talking at a high level about our disclosures, um, I will take you through a couple of slides, which, which are effectively an extract of our disclosures just to start making it real in terms of what um, financed emissions disclosures could look like. 
Um, just at the high level, um, we disclosed various metrics. So we disclosed actual emissions estimates for 2019. Um, so absolute emissions, um, physical intensity, which basically means um, their financed emissions divided by a relevant output. So for homes, we use square meters. For automotives, we use kilometers. Um, as well as economic intensity. Economic intensity is how much is the financed emission per pound lent or per million pound lent. So in money terms, um, when you make a transaction and lend, um, what is the emission from that loan? Um, in addition, I'll mention the data quality issues. Um, so PCAF has a very useful guide in terms of data quality scoring that goes from one to five. But we followed that and for each of our sectors, we published a data quality score. Um, so where we have fours and fives, which is where the data isn't great or where we have used extrapolations or assumptions, we were quite transparent with that. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we've uh, published uh, the 2030 and 2050 estimates um, in terms of intensities as well. And this is just to start setting out where we want to head to. Um, for each of the sectors, we wanted to be very clear and transparent. Um, that's one point Angelica covered right at the start. Transparency is key. So we didn't just say this is what we have done. We were very, very clear in terms of our assumptions, extrapolations, the data quality scoring um, to give the readers a view of um, the current state and what we are doing to enhance this. Um, as I mentioned, um, I sit within finance. The finance team involvement has grown. So I mentioned at the start, we started off as a group, a core group. Um, but as we go deeper into the calculations, as we enter the assumptions, extrapolation, and other territory, I think the role of finance um, grows uh, quite a bit. Um, so finance have led the kind of data review, um, control frameworks, uh, reporting processes, um, the validation of methodologies and assumptions developing the disclosure approach, uh, working with teams like legal. So we had a massive section on the limitations of climate data, limitations of forward-looking approach. So I guess we went with the, with the approach of not withholding disclosures, making as much disclosures as we could, uh, but then making sure we were transparent about the things we were uncomfortable with, where we were applying methodologies um, and assumptions, et cetera. So in the next minute or two, I'll just give you a quick tour of our disclosures. Um, if we can maybe jump to the next slide, please. Um, yeah, so that's what our disclosure report looks like. And on the next slide, you'll see we had a separate section for financed emissions. Uh, we've called it preliminary estimates because this was our initial calculation. And as I mentioned, there were various um, sort of um, areas where we were, um, we had assumptions, et cetera. On the next slide then, as I mentioned, we have developing methodologies. Um, so PCAF is the first one, and SBTI that I have covered. For our forward-looking uh, work, we had to use scenarios. Um, so the bottom three, the Committee for Climate Change, IEA, and Network for Greening the Financial System, these are all scenarios we use to assess the 2030 and 2050 position. And again, given that we had to end up using three scenarios, um, it indicates how much there is a difference between sectors, et cetera. Um, the next slide, again, has that in a tabular presentation, but it gives you the range of guidance and scenarios we have to use. So I guess the main message is um, this isn't easy. Um, there is a lot of complexity, but please start, um, because the earlier you start, um, you know, the, the further you can go. And, and as you'll see from the first column, we have used PCAF um, as the starting point for our absolute um, finance emissions and, and the intensities. Um, if we jump, maybe leave the next slide, but jump onto the next one. Um, that's our actual disclosure in terms of the emissions. Um, so the four sectors I mentioned, and the first two columns cover our absolute emissions for the four sectors, um, and then the next two columns cover the emission intensities, both physical and economic. Then you will see in the middle the data quality score, um, and as you will see, it, it, it's four <laughs> for um, mortgages and agriculture, and, and slightly better for automotive and oil and gas. So we've been quite transparent and in some cases brutal in assessing the data quality. Um, so we can um, kind of represent a fair picture of our, our data quality that we have. The last three columns are the 2030 and 2050 position. Um, yeah, and then following on from that, and I won't cover that in detail, but in the next slide, you will see a dedicated page to mortgages. And we have similar pages for um, all the other sectors. But on the left at the bottom, you will see 
sort of us explaining uh, our score where we have used publicly available data and where we have made extrapolations. We've called that out, the basis, et cetera. Um, and then on the right at the bottom, you will see uh, we have a section of how we are helping our customers um, through transition. So as I said, calculation, reporting, but then the other next step is working with customers to help them transition because when they succeed, then we succeed. Um, I'll probably jump over the next few slides um, because they effectively are covering by sector each of the, um, the sectors we cover. Um, in terms of next steps, what are we planning to do? We've, we've reported a set of disclosures um, and we have done our initial calculations. Um, um, so the next slide, please, um, is we are working on enhancing our management information because we want to start using, or we're already kind of there now, um, in terms of using financed emissions for decision making. So when we make decisions, when we make product decisions, when we make business decisions, carbon should be something we consider. Uh, we naturally um, default to RWA, ECL, uh, PNL. We need to bring carbon into that. Um, so we are working with all the teams who work on management information to enhance that. So carbon becomes a part of decision making. Um, and in doing so, we are working with people to help them understand carbon emissions. So developing their understanding, and this includes business teams, this also includes wider finance teams. Um, this includes teams who are kind of involved in say financial planning and other things. Because when we do our plans um, for the next five years, um, we normally have you know, RWA balance sheet. How do we get carbon in there? It's just changing the thinking of the organization. So this becomes a metrics we consider. And that's the work we're doing in the background. Um, the other piece is obviously we've done four sectors. We want to evolve that and cover other sectors on our balance sheet. We covered 45% last year and we are continuing to add other sectors to, to the work we are doing. Um, and the last bit is, as I mentioned, working on transition. So working with the business teams and finding opportunities and, and supporting customers. Um, so that in a nutshell is what's happening at NatFest and where we are with our journey. I wanted to make one other comment, Carrie, because I think um, Supriya uh, I forgot to mention while well, she showed it, but the Net the NetWest climate report is really good. I mean, I just want to to a big compliment to NetWest for the work that they've done on that climate report, and it also allows me to kind of give everybody a sort of more generic recommendation. Read each other's work on this because it's really helpful. You don't have to. Um, develop the invent the wheel it's just probably just a dutch expression i don't know but but you don't have to reinvent the wheel all to you can just copy uh, and it's it, and we are very keen for you to copy i'm going to copy a lot of netwest's report uh, during our disclosures this year and i'm going to thank netwest uh, for for sharing their work um, but it's it, this is a very collaborative space so i would encourage everybody to read each other's disclosures and uh, and learn learn from that and on that point, Jed, both um, we have worked with both ABN AMRO and Net NatWest to develop um, a detailed case study on the practical steps around accounting for financed emissions. And alongside the guide that I mentioned at the beginning of this session that was published today, um, those two guides have come out to complement that. We refer to them in the guide alongside some other great examples. Um, and then you can have them as a standalone to really deep dive into the practical steps. So thank you very much for participating today. And we look forward to seeing you at a future event.